So, uh, I just got back from fishing at Ocean Isle Beach. While I was down there, I went to uh, Dana Hardware and Tackle, which uh, I'll create a little link uh, and just give you their address. Um, but when I was in there, I spoke with Dana, the owner of the tackle shop, and uh, he was just showing me some things, talking about flounder fishing, and he showed me a knot. Um, I've not seen a knot before, I, who knows. He said he invented it, and, and I have no reason not to believe him. Um, if people watch this and they say, no, that's a such and such knot, then, then it is that. But it's a great knot, and what it's good for is putting a jig on or putting a minnow on and giving that minnow some free run. What it does, I don't know if you can see this, but I've got this worm hook, okay? It puts a static loop in the end of the line. And what that does is, if you've kind of got some tension on here, and you've got a, a minnow or something, or and maybe you're fishing a worm or crankbait or something, and you want to give it some room to have the most freedom of movement, okay? And like with bait fish, this would be especially, especially important, like with a little finger mullet or mud minnow or something, you want him to be able to swim around and have that little bit of movement on there so it's not a perfect static line and he can't move his front end you want to put this static loop in there. Um, I never knew how to tie a static loop like that. I've seen people tie them before. Um, but he showed me this knot and he said he came up with it. It's called the Dana knot. He was so adamant about the knot that he got out a, uh, like a weight scale and a hook and we started uh, working with 20 pound test and then measuring the breaking point of it. And uh, when he measured this, this, this knot had like 90 something percent strength on it and it's a really easy knot to tie to put a static loop in there so obviously i'm not going to tie it with the, the uh, fluorocarbon there and, and it does work with fluorocarbon because i used it the whole time i was at the beach and didn't have any problems with knots coming undone so it works with mono fluorocarbon i don't know if it works with braid or not so here's my fish hook okay that's the eye of my fish hook and this is my fishing line what I'm going to do is teach you how to tie this knot the same way Dana taught me how to tie it. The first thing you did is go in here and tie a simple square knot. And one of the things to remember from this knot is each time you come through a loop, you come toward you. So I've made a circle and I'm going to come toward me with my fishing line. Bam. Now I'm going to take this end, the tag end of the line, go through the eye of my fish hook. I've gone through the eye of my fish hook, and now I'm gonna come back through this little square knot. I can pull this down just a hair now to get it to kind of a workable, and you can see that. Now, I go around this line. One, two, three, four, five. Is that five super important? No, you could probably get away with four, you could probably get away with six, but like most fishing knots, there's some wraparounds in there uh, to keep it from slipping. Once I do that, I've got my loop that my, that, that my uh, hook is in, and then I've got the original square knot loop, the circle right here. I wanna take the tag into this, come back through there, and pull it down. And as I do it with this rope, doesn't act as nicely as the fishing line does, but the fishing line, it cinches right down and uh, looks really good. And as you pull this loop, you can, when you tie this knot, you can adjust the size of your static loop as you cinch it down. You can cinch this down and then pull this out and pull this tag in and pull it down really quick and keep that uh, loop and make that loop as big as you want, in other words, because you may want like a little small loop, you may want a big loop. When you get done, essentially you're just pulling all lines. Pulling your tag in, pulling this. He did warn me about like yanking the heck out of this, uh, this static line. Like as you tighten it, you tighten it and pull these and pull these. And uh, you pull that tag in, but you don't need to pull the heck out of it. He said that it's possible to pull the knot through the original square knot. Um, I, I never had an accident doing that when I was fishing with it. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, it, it's, it's a solid knot. What I like about it is it's a simple knot. It's a simple knot, it's easy to remember, um, and it's something you can use if you want a little more action. If you're putting that hook on and you got that bait fish and you want him to be able to swim around and move that hook a little bit, 
then that loop is going to give him that little bit of freedom to do that. Um, obviously, when you're done, you clip your tag in. The cool thing about this is look where the tag in is. The tag in in this knot is not out here. It's not going to drag on anything. It's inside the loop, um, which is kind of neat. But that's it. I'll call it the Dana knot because uh, he said he invented it, and uh, I believe he did, and it's, uh, it's a great knot. Uh, so thanks, Dana, and uh, I hope you use this knot. I hope you catch a lot of fish.